Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue and I bring you all this video of me talking about a board game. And for now, uh, we're gonna go into a narrative really fast, uh, just to make sure I keep everybody's attention. So this game we have before us is called Final Girl, and this is a narrative, just follow me on this narrative for a second. Imagine you're playing the game, and this is your board state. It's you versus the killer, which in this case is Hans. Hans has four health left, you got one health left, you're both on your last life, you both somehow came back miraculously. And you have these two cards in your hand. These two cards are these cards in your discard. You have a retaliate, a close call, and a guard. And for context, for those who may not know, there's only three defense cards. So this means that you can only suffer or survive one more hit. Uh, oh, sorry, and you have two time. And then also on top of that, Hans is going to attack you twice because he's attacking you once here and he's attacking you additional time there. So long story short, if you don't take out Hans right now, the game is over. You've lost. There's no there's no coming back from this. So you decide to go ahead and do your Fear Strike, which is enough damage to take him out. That's going to be 1, 2, plus 1, plus 1, so 4 total. And Hans has exactly 4 left. 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can take him out. All you need is exactly 2 successes. Based on the horror level, which is here, you are allowed to roll 2 dice total, and you have 1 ability to re-roll some stuff. So let's go ahead and see if you can get it. So first thing you need is to take your dice, and you roll them and you get yourself a partial success and a fail. Partial success allows you to discard two cards to make that a success. You only have one card in your hand, so unfortunately you can't do that. So instead, you take the alternative to where you use your close call, which allows you to spend two time to reroll all your dice. So you spend your last two time, and you go ahead and roll your dice. And when you roll your dice, you need two stars. And you get one star and one failure, thus, Meaning that you're going to do not enough damage to take him out and your turn's going to end. So you're going to do one, two, three. So you're taking out three from Hans. And unfortunately, that also means that now Hans will, or you get to reduce the horror level, which I guess is cool. Your turn ends, you do your stuff, Hans is going to swing at you, and Hans is taking you out. This is one of the things that I enjoy slash hate so much about this game is that this is so based on dice. You're so locked to dice to the random number chance that you can roll this a few different times and there's statistics that you can have uh, to where things become unbearable. Now, if this game wasn't as long as it was, this would be fine. If this game was like a 10, 20, 15 minute or 30 minute game, sure. But this game can take up to two hours or two hours or so, sorry, from the camera. Uh, so what I had to propose to this and the whole thing I'm trying to sell us on here is the concept of adding cards. Now, this is basically going to be just a number distribution. This is just a random number generator. These are cards that I have. I actually have two deck of cards, uh, which I'll bring over here. Oh, no. Right there. Uh, and these, these cards are pretty cool because uh, they're actually waterproof. But these are official bicycle cards. Uh, you can use whatever cards you want. But the idea is to have um, is to have four of each number, which in this case I've used queens to represent sixes. So I use, I use queens to represent sixes, uh, sorry, black queens represent sixes, red queens represent fives, and shift this over. Uh, fours represent fours, threes represent threes, and twos represent twos, and ones represent ones. Uh, now, if you were trying to figure out what's the correlation of all this, uh, in Final Girl you roll these dice, and the way the tracking system works is basically ones and twos are fails, so that corresponds to the cards here. Threes and fours are partial, uh, partial successes, which means that you can discard the two cards and make it a success. And the final fives and sixes are successes. So this is an additional way to possibly play this game. Now, you might be asking the question, okay, you know, Cool Blue, why would I do this when there's literally dice? This is literally just dice, but with more steps. And you're correct, this is dice with more steps. Um, but the, um, the additional thing that you can have with this is you have the ability to count cards. What I mean by that is that when you're playing cards, you know that your ones and your twos are played already, so you can start seeing the queens. The secondary thing is that uh, to integrate better with the game, uh, we do, or to continue with the randomization, I should say, uh, we do have a, a reshuffle system, and the reshuffle system is set essentially these jokers. Whenever you see two jokers in your discard, you immediately have to reshuffle all the cards. And then finally, to pair additionally with the game, with the time system, um, you have the ability to, during your planning phase, spend two time to reshuffle all the cards. Uh, to spend four time to get rid of any one card that you would like to um, that's in your current discard and then of course that just kind of integrates dovetails perfectly into the fact that you can uh, over time if you decide to spend four time which is a lot of time in this game which is a lot of money resource you can spend a lot of time or four time to get rid of cards if you do that early on 
you might be able to make it to where this deck becomes more reliable. You start skewing the numbers towards yourself and it becomes more gamery, if you will. It gives you a little bit more control, a little bit more ability to do stuff. An additional thing to mention too, is that in addition to the cards, uh, it's not just the cards are replacing dice or the dice are replacing cards. Effectively what we're doing uh, in stride of things is we're essentially using cards and dice. So in this particular situation to where my character has to roll two dice, um, what I would, would be allowed to do, so just to go through a shuffle, we shuffle the cards, and then we take out three randomly, put them to the side, and those will be reshuffled in once the reshuffle happens. I'll put this up here so you can see them. And then here's my, here's my deck. And if I have to roll two dice, I can decide to either flip two cards, roll two dice, or roll one die and flip one card. This does add extra steps. This does add a little bit to the top. Uh, of the bookkeeping of things in this game. Um, but I feel that this gives you just the right amount of extra agency in your play to kind of strategize and give you some additional ways to help control your fate. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, if there's a situation to where maybe you've played through and you've gotten rid of some of the ones and twos already. So like so, and this is what your deck looks like. So you've gotten rid of all these cards throughout the time of your game. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So you got rid of, you spent 24 time total throughout the course of the game up to this point to get rid of these cards. So now you know for a fact that the, the statistics of these cards here in the deck are actually much, 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 much better than uh, you might normally see. Sorry, Joker's right out of there. So that means that now we're in a situation to where we're back over here and you gotta decide, okay, I really need, I really need this critical blow. Oh, was it critical blow? What card did I have? Uh, I lost my cards. Uh, I really need this next attack to go through swimmingly. If it does not go through swimmingly, then I'm gonna be in trouble. So you're back into a situation to where now you have more control of your fate. Oh, there they are. To where you can do your fear strike. And when you do your fear strike, you say, okay, I know that right now this is a critical situation. I need two successes. Otherwise, I am a, I'm a goner. And if I'm, not a, if, if I'm a goner, then the game's over and I lose everything. So let's reset this back. So what you can do is you can flip cards. Uh, the queens, uh, I use the queens because it seemed thematic for the game, since the game's surrounded by the final girl or circling the final girl. Uh, the queens, the red uh, queens are fives and the black queens are sixes, but they're successes nonetheless. So I'm going to go ahead and flip two cards. So that's a fail. And that's also a fail. And look, it's like I just rolled dice. And I'm in the situation where I'm going to play a close call. Once again, just assume we're back in the original scenario. So I played Coast Call to re-roll, or re-flip in this case. And I'm going to try to rely on the cards again. I don't know if they're going to work out for me, but we'll see. So that's one success, and that's a partial success. So I'm back in the same situation. But the main thing is that I now feel more in control as an arbiter of my fate. Because maybe, maybe if I had just flipped one card and rolled one die, I might be able to actually win. Who knows? Maybe if I had, you know, flipped cards harder, <laughs> if you will, uh, well, you'd see the situation if I had a third card to flip, uh, that would allow me to um, actually be successful. So this one worked out in a situation such that I didn't succeed. But it's the same concept that you have with the dice, and it also makes you kind of wonder about your strategy a little bit more and gives you a little bit more agency because in the previous turns, let's say instead of buying some of those extra cards that I might have bought to get, get me to this point, maybe I could have gotten rid of some fours and some threes and some other cards. Uh, maybe it was a situation where maybe I should have reshuffled because I see a lot of queens showing. And then also in the situation of card counting, uh, if this is what my board state looks like at the start of everything, so let's say that these particular cards have been played, and we're taking this back from the top. Once again, I'm just giving a lot of hypotheticals because I'm trying to show the value that this system can have in adding to the game and enhancing the game, at least in my opinion. You know, of course I'm going biased towards it because it's the thing I created. Um, well, you look at the cards. Oh, actually. Uh, sorry. Uh, there we go. I just need a joker in there. So let me shuffle these. Uh, so we know it's random. And uh, you look at the cards. Let's say hypothetically, this is what came out before. So. You flipped a few cards already uh, previously, and this is what's in your discard. So you can see that you have one, two, three queens down here. And you know there's eight queens total in the deck, and queens are success. So there's five queens left in the deck. Uh, you know that you've taken out these cards. So you know you've taken out one, two, three. You've taken out all the aces and two of the twos. So there are now six less bad cards in this deck. So there's 16 bad cards, if you will. And by that, I mean there's four, four ones, four twos, four threes, and four fours. Threes and fours in this case are considered bad because you don't have any extra cards to make a partial success a full success, so they might as well be a failure. So there's six less bad cards. So there's only 10 bad cards, and there's five good cards in the deck total, not including the jokers. There's two more jokers in there, potentially. Uh, oh, I lied. Sorry, so let's take out top three, my bad. 
There's potentially five queens in there. There's potentially two more jokers in there. Uh, so knowing that, knowing that information, you can actually make more informed decisions. You can say, okay, maybe I will flip two cards from here because it seems like we got a lot of queens left in there. And of the bad cards with air quotes, we got one, two, three, four, five, six bad cards. So there's potentially four bad cards left in here. There's potentially five queens left in here, and there's definitely, or potentially two jokers in here. Uh, not including the three cards that we randomly took out. So now you're in a situation where it's like, okay, hmm, I can try to risk it by rolling a die, or I can push my luck by flipping these cards. I think in this case, in this current board state, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the cards. And once again, I still got my close call left, so I might be able to save myself. So let's go ahead and we're doing the Fury Strike. We need two successes. So I'm gonna flip one, that's a success, flip another one, and oh look, cool, success. Got it, perfect. And I win the game because one, I did some long-term planning. I spent the earlier time I invested to get rid of these cards. Two, I looked at the cards that I had here and just said, okay, statistically speaking, I might have a better chance of doing this. And three, I didn't have to let it go down to a single dice roll, which if we're talking about statistics on dice rolls, uh, this little sheet is one that I created for myself. Um, I guess I'll, I can post it on Board Game Geek if you really want me to. Um, but it's literally just a table showing the dice, uh, the number of dice that you have, in this case two, number of combinations for the numbers. There's 21 combinations for two dice, uh, allegedly, uh, between the ones, the twos, and the threes. And in order for you to get two stars, which is what we need in this situation, there's a 14% chance. Uh, now, of course, feel free to double check this math. Um, I just literally just kind of randomly pulled this off the internet as I was um, trying to find out how to do the permutations. So if this is incorrect, my apologies. Uh, I'll eventually post the correct numbers or somebody will correct me because that's how the internet works. But the main thing I'm trying to point out is that this statistics of 14%, so I have a 14% chance, assuming this is true, of rolling a five and a six, or a five and a five, or a six and a six. So given that there's a 14% chance I'm gonna succeed on this, I'd rather hedge my bets with the cards on the deck because I know that I've gone through the deck and I know I've called out some cards and yes, uh, the deck becomes useless once you have more dice, because if I have six dice, there's no way I'm gonna get six queens in here because there's only four queens in their total. Well, I lied. There's eight queens in their total. So in this particular board state, it would be much better if I was rolling six dice to roll dice. So you just choose to roll dice because I have one, two, three, four, five queens down here. There's only three queens left in the deck. And that means that I can only get a max of three if, I, if I'm to roll or if I'm to flip six cards. So I can do a mix and match. I can say, okay, I'm gonna flip three cards and roll three dice. And if I flip three cards and roll three dice and I'm looking for successes, and this is in the hypothetical scenario that I'm allowed to roll six dice for some reason. Uh, that's gonna be card one, card two, card three. So it's one success, two partial successes because threes and fours are partials. And then I roll the three dice like normal. Box two, that's wrong box. Uh, there it is. And there we go. So I have two successes, two partials, and two ones. And that's how you would read that. So the whole point of me mentioning all this is just that this is a particular system that I feel uh, would be a very good thing to add as a custom mod. Um, I've been playing with it for the past four or five games. Um, I'm, I'm doing a playthrough of all the scenarios and it started from scenario one with a very basic rudimentary version of it. And by the time I'm at scenario four, which I just got done finished or just finished uh, recently, um, scenario four has allowed me to kind of tune it to where I think it's about ready for just kind of saying, hey, you guys should try this out. Let me know what you think. So here's my video. Just kind of explain the system, what it is, what it can be useful, how it can be used. And of course, you can put it into other games and whatever existence or whatever reasonable existence it could have there. Uh, but the main thing is that this is something that has helped me enjoy the game significantly more. And it's something as simple as just giving me another way to achieve the goal. It can give me a slight illusion of choice because in reality, you know, yes, I've gotten rid of six hypothetically in this, but this is a little bit unrealistic for this game because the amount of cards that you purchase or the, the amount of money that you spend purchasing very valuable cards in the game uh, makes it such that spending 21 times, is that 21? No, 24 times, spending 24 time because it's, uh, it's $4 to actually remove a card from your discard. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six, right? Yeah, six. So spending 24 time is a little bit unreasonable, uh, as in that, like, you know, yes, over the course of a full game, I guess it's not that unreasonable, but that's a lot of time that you spent. So yes, you spent a lot of time doing this, so you probably suffered in your movement, you probably suffered in how many victims you saved, you probably suffered in being able to search for items, maybe you're trying to buy cards, you're getting the right opportunities. So you gotta ask yourself the question of, do I spend time to get rid of just one single card for four time, or do I spend that four time on something more valuable? 
hmm, hmm, I don't know. And it kind of gives you that sense of crisis where I think that crisis is perfectly, fits perfectly well, slots perfectly well into this game. And makes this game, like I said, for me, significantly more enjoyable. Um, I don't know if it can ever become an official rule, and I do understand that this particular game stands on the shoulders of existing, an existing sy system from the hostage negotiator system. But that said, even if I played the hostage negotiator system, I would probably still implement the system because for me, this makes the game way more bearable because sometimes those dice, those dice don't be helping. Those dice don't be helping. Uh, and then also, it also begs the question of, you know, hey, this is adding a level of complexity, is this too much? You know, also you have to go find cards, there's a whole rigmarole about what to use, and yeah, 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 there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And also on the playtesting side, I've only playtested it for four games myself, and in that playtesting, uh, every single game that I've played, there's been a slightly different version of it, a slightly different iteration of it. So that goes along with to say that um, even in my own playtesting, I haven't played it to a, or hasn't got, has not gotten to a consistent set of rules, so this is, where I think the rule set should be for time cost sounds reasonable. So if you're at the end of your, if you're in your planning phase, you can spend four time to get rid of one card. Then you can spend two time to force the deck to shuffle. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Uh, so so there, there, there'll be a full list of rules in a board game geek post. So definitely go check out the post that will be in the description once this video goes live. Um, so you can try to figure out what I'm talking about, what I'm referring to, if you want to set up your own. But I like this system a lot. I think it makes this game significantly more enjoyable. Uh, I do have this little dice statistic sheet, which like I said, feel free to take it or leave, take it with a grain of salt. Double check my math, please. Please double check my math because uh, having some kind of statistic sheet is nice to help, at least for me, feel like I'm making an informed decision. Like, yes, I know two dice are two dice, but in reality, it's nice to see the statistics of what are my chances of getting two stars? And it's like, okay, I have 14% chance of getting two stars, two dice. But if I get a third dice somehow, then I have a 29% chance. And you know, let me, let, me, let me do for three dice instead of two. Uh, and then you can kind of use, use the table to kind of figure out your statistics. So if I'm rolling six dice, then according to this, I have a 56% or 58% chance. And uh, if you want to know what the actual raw numbers are, this is uh, what it's all based on. So it's basically just this number divided by that in percentage form. So there's out of 21 combinations, there's three combinations that have a five, five, uh, sorry, a five or six for two, for both dice. So that's, uh, of course, we can simulate that here. So five, five is a possible combination. And then uh, now, now we're getting to the whole math of permutations. Um, I feel like this video might go on a little bit longer than it probably should. Uh, five, six, so five, six, and then of course, six, six. And uh, where's six? Oh my gosh, why is it so hard to find a six? There it is. So those are the three combinations you can have. So since you take that divided by that, and that's how you get your percentage, uh, math, just doing basic math stuff. So according to the internet, according to the calculator that I used, these are the permutations. So you have 161 possible combinations for three stars, which is used for atonement and some other rare, rare things in this game, uh, when you're rolling six dice. So I put it all there in the chart. Cool. All right. Anyway, uh, percentages probably make a little bit more sense for people to look at because it's you can visually see it and it's like, oh, I understand. Now this is your chance of getting it. This is not saying that this is a total percentage because it does change depending on how many combinations you have uh, versus the things. Anyway, all right, nothing to be random about that. Um, that is it for this particular video. It's just basically talking about the card system. Uh, these particular cards that I have, as I mentioned before, are Bicycle. These are the Tragic Royalty playing cards. These are really cool fine because they're waterproof and um, I, I think they fit their purpose. I would possibly do some custom cards, especially if the system becomes really cool, but I, I, think, I, think, I'm, I think I'm kind of digging the, the queens because like they, they all look very expressive which is really cool in my opinion so yeah so that's it for this particular video uh hopefully this is something useful that you all might find some use in maybe you don't maybe you find it useless maybe it's like hey why did i watch this this is this is dumb or please give me your feedback on what you think about the system um, i think four time is is the right strike because it's like four four time is pretty pretty expensive like you're talking about sacrificing buying a planning or you're sacrificing blind, buying a um distraction plus a plus a close call i, I don't know if it'll uh, if, if it'll stay at four i feel like four might be no no yeah i take it back four four feels right four feels right so far so far anywho so that's gonna be it for the video hope you all enjoyed it and uh like i said definitely let me know your feedback um check out the link in the descriptions if you want to see the forum post about it so you can figure out how to set your own up if you want to try to try it out for yourself and yeah, would I recommend Final Girl with this system? Of course. 
uh, without the system, eh, it kind of depends on your um, your threshold for suffering. Because sometimes the dice don't be dicing, and, and they, they just kind of show up and make you have the worst kind of day. So yeah, so it's a dice rolling game through and through. This system helps it be a little bit less of a dice rolling game, so take it or leave it. Uh, anyway, that's it. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching. And as always, I will see you all whenever.